What is up guys, DZ Fear, and today I have a very special pack opening video. I know I really dialed back on the pack openings, we're not an actual pack opening channel, however sometimes when I come across interesting or unique items, it's just fun to open them on the channel. This box is of Primal Origin, and this is a very, very important set. I picked this up when I was in Tennessee for YCS Knoxville, I, if you remember a couple weeks ago I did some uh, pack openings from some other packs that I got there, I think it was Duelist Alliance as well as Lord of the Tachyon Galaxy. I bought an entire box of this set, and this was one of the older sets that they had on there. They pretty much had every core um, set since like uh, the past five years. So this is one of the older ones. This thing is from 2014. It was the last core booster set released before the uh, NAWCQ of that year. And that was like hat format and Geargia and Sylvans and Lightsworns and Dragon Rulers, a very diverse format, pretty cool stuff. But more importantly, this is the last set before Pendulum summoning was introduced no pendulum monsters in here obviously no link monsters and there are so many crazy good cards in this set that hopefully we can pull to kind of talk about them and we have the artifacts which is the very first set with artifacts in it we have the second wave sylvan support that made them meta we have all sorts of crazy individual cards like treptix dionea there are so many good cards in the set i'm very excited to open it for you guys and uh, yeah like i said i've um, really been trying to dial back on those pack openings unless there's something that's like truly unique and you don't see a a ton of primal origin openings in 2019 so i thought this would be a cool product to buy this is also uh, probably during one of the first times i was really really heavily playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. i uh, loved legacy of the valiant i loved primal origin I was going to tons of regionals uh, when these sets were coming out, and I love uh, a lot of people, myself included, fondly, fondly remember the hat to gear gear format. You could basically play whatever deck you wanted to and top. Um, as far as ratios in the set, I don't know. I think we're guaranteed like a secret rare, maybe an, ult an ultimate rare. I think two ultras, uh, maybe not them. Maybe just one ultra. I don't know. It's been a while since I've opened like a full box of these older packs. We've uh, opened some loose packs of older uh, sets, but not so much like a full box. We'll have to see. I don't remember how many supers you pulled. It might have just been four. Uh, there actually are some valuable cards in this set, namely Artifact Scythe. It's kind of interesting. And uh, if we pull that, or Moral Talk, we can kind of talk about that as we get them. Oh man, we have number 80, Rhapsody in Berserk, a card that wouldn't see a ton of play when it first came out, but eventually saw tons of uh, extra decks play in the Necroz format because it was so good at taking out those Necroz uh, ritual spells in your opponent's graveyard and banishing them. Galaxy cards, Gimmick Puppet, Dust Troy, Gazer Shark, that card, uh, all these little, there's like a whole rank 5 strategy that you can play and no one really does it with uh, the fish monsters that we eventually got a lot more support for. But uh, funny thing about the artifacts of this year, or the artifacts of this set in this format, is that you have to remember that th there was a time when both Artifact Scythe and Artifact Moral Talk were legal and people weren't playing Scythe at all. Nowadays we think of Artifact Scythe being by far the better uh, card just because it is uh, just shuts your opponent out of the game. But there was a time in Yu-Gi-Oh when the artifacts came out when Moral Talk was considered like the overpowered card, and that's why it ended up getting limited. Uh, speaking of limited cards, we have a banned card, Galaxy Tomahawk, a card that was uh, pretty gimmicky and wasn't really successful when it first came out just because summoning tokens is pretty good. I guess you can use them for synchro summons, but a lot of people just wanted to like, seize summon during the time that this set came out. But this card later on become obscenely, obscenely powerful with the introduction of Link monsters, namely cards like Link Spider and Skull Dread, all these crazy things that you can actually get tons of value off the Galaxy Tomahawk. And uh, also, sort of a little funny note here, this card actually gets better just in the amount of tokens it summons with link summoning because you can put it in your extra monster zone you summon five tokens instead of just four so it's actually a pretty cool thing that you might not think of the card not only got better because tokens got better but also because you literally can summon another token that's some crazy card here ancient gear box exceeds universe oh man this is a very popular side deck card maybe not so much right when primal origin came out but eventually it was very very good um, especially going into like the formats uh, after this this set came out you saw this card used a lot against like burning abyss and stuff so you target two face of exceed monsters on the field send both monsters to the graveyard and special summon one exceeds monster from your extra deck accepting number monster whose rank is equal to or one less than the combined original ranks of those two exceed monsters and if you attach this card this has materials 
So that's a lot of text. Basically, you use it to uh, send two um, like siege monsters to the graveyard, and then if you sent like two level fours, you could summon a rank seven or a rank eight monster, and then attach this as material. Pretty cool stuff. And then we have Sylvan Princess Sprout. Like I said, the second wave of Sylvan support is in this set. So we have cards like Sylvan Charity, Sylvan Princess Sprout, and we have uh, Sage Koyas in the set. Um, not the original ones though; those were in the last set. But this is still one of the more important Sylvan cards. Usually a two or a three of. Um, sometimes I guess you saw people play one, but most people played two or three of this card. Uh, helps you make rank eight monsters and trigger Sage Koya in your hand. So that's our first hollow pull, which is pretty cool. That's some other random cards here. Got Sylvan Cherub Sprout. Never really took on to uh, the competitive version of Sylvan's, but some people played it. Open and go through here. It'd be cool to pull uh, Sage Koya. I like that card a lot. We have another Ghost Trick. Pretty pulled a lot of those. A lot of number monsters back then. Diamond Core of Koaki Miru. So one of the themes of Primal Origin was giving legacy support. That's sort of the idea behind the set. One of those legacy support cards was Diamond Core of the Koaki Miru. Now this card in the TCG wasn't very popular. I mean, really, Koaki Miru was not a very good deck. You saw Koaki Miru Drago, Drago see some play. But overall, Koaki Mirus weren't played that much. But I'm sure if there's any Duel Links players watching, they'll know this card was uh, obscenely strong and Duel Links, obviously, because it just <laughs> completely warped their format, but we'll kind of put that to the side there. I'm a big fan of Kawaki Mirrors. I still have all my Ultimate Rare Urnites and stuff like that in my collection. i uh, never really caught on, though. I mean, I don't know. I Actually, Jeff Jones almost topped the uh, NAWCQ with Kawaki Mirrors. I believe he lost in the very last round, but there is a uh, feature match um, where he's playing against Fire Fist, I believe, or maybe it's one of the... What was that deck called? Fat Fire Fist Artifact Trap Tricks. Um, I'm pretty sure he's playing that. Something along those lines. There were a lot of decks back then that looked very, very similar. A lot of them were playing hands or artifacts or trap tricks, and then the the other cards, what you filled in. Um, but anyway, yeah, Koaki Mirus, not very good, but Jeff Jones almost topped an NAWCQ with them. Pretty interesting to think about. Rose Archer. Oh man, another Duel Links card. This card wasn't played that much in TCG. Um, it just required a little bit too much setup, but it was a, a card that people considered playing. I believe in Duel Links, that card was a lot better though. A lot of galaxy cards in the set. Yeah, it definitely is weird going through these older packs and looking at just how many like random cards they throw in there. So many number cards and stuff. When you open newer packs, you do pull a lot of link monsters, but a lot of stuff seems more like archetype and archetype based. Where this stuff, a lot of it's, and I mean, it's, it's admittedly because we're opening the legacy support stuff. There's a lot of just random cards in here, like Shogi Knight, <laughs> pretty crazy. Artifact Galaxy Tyranno is pretty cool looking card. Evo Singularity, another piece of legacy support. This one is for the Evo Tile or Evil Sore archetype. And oh man, was this card hyped up. Uh, Evos never really were good with this card. They actually topped a couple YCSs before this card was released. I think they topped a regional after that card was released. But overall, even though this card is a one card Evolve Zor, it just requires, or Evolve Zar, sorry. It requires a little bit too much setup. Then we have Scrap Factory, another piece of legacy support, which by the way, I'm just kind of putting all legacy support and the rares to the side here. So we have Scrap Factory. Once again, very cool card in theory. Really does beef up the Scrap deck. And there were a lot of overhyped like Scrap builds. But in general, Scraps didn't really actually see a resurgence with the release of Scrap Factory. Even though the card is uh, just, just an example of like, a card being very, very good, but not quite good enough to uh, fix the inconsistencies with the overall uh, the archetype or whatever. Let's see here. Oh, Traptrix Dianea. Man, what a card. So this is not the first release of Traptrix. Like I said, it's sort of a legacy support. Although Traptrix, I believe, were pretty recent by the time this came out. But this card really did make a huge difference. I mean, you saw Mermilio see play without this card. But once this card came out, you... Oh, we have a secret too. Once this card came out, you uh, really, really saw Traptrix in like every single deck. And this is one of the reasons. It's just a one card rank four monster that also pops your opponent's back row because that's Mermilio's summon effect. Pretty insane stuff. Then we have our secret row, which I I believe is we're only gonna pull one secret rare we have thessalos the mega monarch this is back uh, before a lot of the monarch support that you think of with monarchs nowadays uh this card didn't see play when it was released but uh did see a lot of play actually in domain monarchs because uh unlike the other uh card unlike um this one basically you can see your opponent's hand See if we have here. Look at your opponent's hand. Discard one card from your hand. Then if some monster card inflict damage to your opponent equal to its original level times 200. So the important part about this card is that you could like see your opponent's hand and figure out what to uh, set up your own board like so that your opponent couldn't break it so easily. Very good card in Domain Monarchs. Um, it was played a little bit in the Extra Deck Monarch variants, but mostly in Domain Monarchs. We just needed uh, more Monarch cards. This was a pretty much staple one of. 
Got some crazy cards here. Mermaid Shark, another one of those fish cards that didn't really see a ton of play. Oh, and oh man, this would have been an insane pull back in 2014. Artifact Morale Talk. So this card doesn't seem that good compared to Scythe in 2019, but let me tell you, this card's still pretty good. It's a non-targeting piece of removal, and that's still pretty cool. I mean, it's not the best thing, and obviously when people play Sanctum nowadays, they want to just lock their opponent out of the game. That's a very cool pull, though, because this card was iconic. It was in every every single deck. If you guys think cards like uh, Dangers are splashed in a lot of decks, you must have not played during 2014 where it seemed like every deck had artifacts, every deck had hands and trap tricks and all those cards. Artifact Maltok was a lot of the reason for that. I don't even know if people were siding Scythe, to be completely honest. They, they might have been, but I think for the most part, people were just playing Maltok. I think sometimes if you played like the bigger artifact engine, you'd play one Scythe, maybe, like if you're playing the Ignitions and the Beagle Talks and stuff, but overall, it's just kind of Maltok all by itself. We have no pen and my girlfriend likes that card a lot. She collects a lot of the penguin cards, but no penguin. Sort of, uh, once again, legacy support for uh, penguins. <laughs> and it's actually, like, not even kidding. This card's actually pretty nuts in relation to the other penguin cards. Obviously not in relation to just, like, all of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, we have Bujin Sinent. Uh, Diamond Court's hard to say. And the band played on Photon po or Phonon. Not Photon. Phonon? Phonon? <laughs> Pulse Dragon. No penguin again. Some, yeah, lots of artifacts. And uh, when artifacts were first revealed, a lot of people didn't really know that they could just be played as like a small four card engine. Um, I mean, first off, people usually put them as a five card engine back then. They played two Moral Talks. But more importantly, a lot of the times, uh, people thought that like the pure artifact deck would be like the way to go with that build. I remember uh, Absorbing Jar being like super hyped up. Ghost Trick Succubus, which is actually a pretty decent card. Used to be played in Frogs a lot. Actually, my friend Pasquale topped uh, this WCQ, this NAWCQ 2014, playing Frogs, and I know that he used at least two copies of this card, maybe even three. So it, uh, maybe not the card you think of when you think of Frogs in 2019, but definitely a staple extra deck pick for Frogs back in the day. Go here, Sylvan Snap Jurassic Gun or whatever. Okay, never really saw play. That was, I believe, the promo for whatever those deluxe editions where you had Scythe as a promo, and I believe this card as a promo. No, Scythe was a sneak peek promo. I don't even know, but this card was one of the promos. It got an ultra rare, a super rare upgrade or something like that, but it never really saw play. It's so kind of a weird choice. You can go through here a little bit faster now. We got Gladiator Beast Augustus, which is a uh, obviously one of the legacy support for Gladiator Beast. And we pulled the cover card, number 62, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. It was uh, one of the cards you could have played back when uh, before we had Galaxy Cypher Dragon, whichever that card is that seals monsters. Um, just one of the possible rank eights you can play to rank up into the, uh, the whatever is it, Dark, <laughs> Dark Matter Dragon. I was trying to think of what that card is called, but one of the possible rank eights, but Cypher Dragon kind of power corrupted, but still a pretty cool card. Ancient Gear box. Got some cool stuff going on here. Oh, man. <laughs> Phantom Fortress. I don't even know how to pronounce that guy, even if I could read it. This card I, I thought was so good. I tried to play it in, like, every deck because it has a bunch of cool effects of banished cards. And we have Noble Knight, uh, what, Ichtar, Ektar, or something like that. Uh, one of the Noble Knight support cards. One of the last Noble Knight support cards. Uh, well, I guess not really, but one of the last because uh, in terms of it getting released in main sets, I know recently we had some more support, but there was a pretty long gap there. But once they switched over to uh, the Pendulum cards, they didn't really print Noble Knights in the core sets anymore. So this is one of one of the last cards for like the main set of Noble Knights. Sorry, I'm going kind of slow, but I really I really like this set, and I think that uh, this format is like probably my favorite format that I've ever played, and a lot of people's favorite format. So it's just kind of cool looking back at these cards that would have been pulled back in the day and see how they uh, they compare now. I mean, really, this set uh, maybe isn't the best if you don't have, like, old Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but for a lot of people, this was, like, a set that kind of brought them back into the game because they were like, oh, my Scrap deck is getting you support, or, like, oh, my Medulce deck is getting you support. Actually, uh, <laughs> the Medulce card in the set, Medulce Angeli, is ridiculous. Probably one of the best pieces of Legacy support ever released. Our Chapter of Dianea, pretty cool. And uh, we do have Artifact Sanctum in this pack. Uh, it's pretty hard to pull. Once again, I don't even know... Is this, I, I feel like this set did have ultimate rares, or was this after they took ultimate rares? I don't know anymore. It's hard It's hard to tell. I'm pretty sure this set had ultimate rares. I could be wrong. Oh, we have Mecha Phantom Beast O-Lion. This card will probably skyrocket in price um, in the next couple of years here once we uh, ever get Kristan Needle Fiber into the, uh, the, the TCG. I'm trying to think if this set actually did have ultimate rares. I don't really know. 
Uh, maybe this was after. I remember that they like switched that at some point. Oh man, we got the Monarchs Erupt, the card that you uh, always hope your True Draco opponent just never draws because it locks you out of monster effects and it's so annoying to get rid of. Um, this card would be a lot easier to get rid of if it just blew up immediately if your opponent didn't have a Tribute Summon monster, but because it's in their end phase, it takes a while, so it doesn't always work out like that. But it's still a very good card. Wasn't really played that much in the actual Monarch strategy. Even Domain Monarch a lot of times didn't play this card, which is kind of interesting to think about um, that negating monster effects didn't matter that much because you were using domain to lock them out of the extra deck anyway. Just something to think about. Yeah, I can't remember. If we don't put an ultimate rare in this box, I would assume that there were no ultimate rares this time. Um, I honestly like can't remember though. I know that they, they changed up the ultimate rare um, like how many were in a box a while ago and how many cards were actually selected as ultimate rares. So it'll be interesting to think, Don, thousands thrown. I've never even seen that card in my life. What the heck? Every time I see a card that I haven't seen, it's just like very surprising. We have Try and Guess, a uh, sort of piece of support, uh, indirect legacy support for Nurse Burn, which at the time that this was released uh, was very, very hyped up, believe it or not, Nurse Burn of all things, just because that was like extra copies of Gift Card go through here and go uh, succubus i guess it's actually not succubus it's so cute boss it's uh just just different enough to not actually be succubus although there is a succubus in the older set succubus knight i believe uh blizzard thunderbird artifact labrys galactic charity phone on pulse dragon again this weird <laughs> look at this guy hundred footed horror man all those random cards you can see there's some hazy flame support this would have been a year after cosmo blazer or whatever um, well, maybe a little bit longer than a year after cosmo blazer maybe not a year maybe it's just a couple sets i don't know but still um, i think konami is calling that as legacy support for hazy flames got uh ooh, uh, <laughs> number c107 neo galaxy eyes tachyon dragon look at that huge monster 4500 attack points oh my gosh it's blue eyes ultimate dragon who would have guessed it we just have a couple packs left i believe that we are only pulling one i think it really was just one ultra one secret back in the day not entirely sure. Ghost Rares, I believe, were still around at this time. Maybe not, though. I don't know. I think this was a time when they were doing that thing where Ghost Rares were in the sets, but they weren't the cover card, if I remember correctly. We have, okay, two Ultras. That's cool. Oh, we got no. Okay, so this card was terrible. It was a super hyped up, uh, well, not really, but it was it was a very much talked about field spell for Noble Knights, complete garbage. This card, though, oh my gosh, Ragna Zero was so strong. Pop a card and then you draw a card like this. Oh my gosh, the advantage that you could get off that thing was insane. Oh, and we have the reason that uh, Morphing Jar 1 and 2 were banned for a while. And probably the reason that Morphing Jar number 2 will stay banned, uh, I don't think it'll be banned forever, but for even longer than it should. Because if this card didn't exist, Morphing Jar number 2 probably wouldn't see play i don't even know if it would actually see play even in this format with jackpot 7 but that's at least why konami is probably keeping it from the public got the last set here no ultimate rares i'm pretty sure no i think this was after that they changed the ultimate rare thing i can't quite remember um i know if they like changed up they they definitely made a change somewhere along the lines where like um the ultimate rares went from like being every possible um every ultra rare was an ultimate rare to like just like a couple of them where i know that that change was made somewhere along the way but anyway that is gonna wrap it up for my primal origin box opening this is something that i've been uh, having this, uh, sat next to my desk for a while now and then i'm just now opening it because it's a really cool product as you can tell from me rambling on about these cards i really do like this set and this format of Yu-Gi-Oh. it's one of my favorite of all time and for a lot of people, I think they agree with me as well. But I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.